Penn State finished the 2023 college football season with a 10-3 record, beating everyone in the regular season except for Ohio State on the road and Michigan at home, and finishing off the season with a disappointing but somewhat expected loss, given the opt-outs, against Ole Miss in the Peach Bowl. Before the 2023 season began, I made it very clear that based off of the fact that Drew Aller was going to be a true sophomore, finally getting his feet wet in the starting position, the fact that I thought that Penn State's offensive line on the interior and defensive line on the interior as well wasn't going to be that great, and that Michigan and Ohio State were returning more production than the Nittany Lions, I made it clear that I thought 2024 would be Penn State's year, in the sense that this would be one of James Franklin's best teams in 2024, talent-wise, experience-wise, and more importantly, perhaps, upside-wise. And it would also be a big year because there would be pressure and expectations put upon James Franklin and his program. Well, now here we are. It is January 2024. The only game remaining in the 2023 season is the national championship game between Washington and Michigan in two days at the time of this recording, Monday, January 8th. And Penn State and everyone else except for the Huskies and Wolverines, who will be a part of the Big Ten next season, shout out technically Big Ten National Championship game. Everyone else except for those two teams is into the 2024 preseason mode. And I think for Penn State, you have to do all that you can, because I think this coming year is all or nothing. If James Franklin, with a veteran set of running backs, a veteran defense, linebacker, experienced defensive lineman who it'll be a mix of starters from this season and quality backups from this season as well. And with a, a now veteran quarterback in Drew Aller and a elite set of coordinators and great recruiting classes stacked on top of each other. If James Franklin can't get it done in 2024, also with an expanded playoff, will he ever get it done? Will he ever win the Big Ten again? Will he ever get Penn State onto the national title and the national stage? And will Penn State ever be anything except for a Tier 2 Big Ten program behind Michigan, Ohio State, and potentially one of Oregon or Washington, who are two programs that I think are Big Ten ready the minute they step on the field? But welcome back, fellow football fanatics. It's College Football with Sam, your host, and before we dive any deeper, I just want to share a friendly reminder to hit the like button, share this video around any Penn State or college football fans that you know, subscribe to the channel, the best Big Ten football channel on YouTube, and click the notification bell so that you can be notified when I release more college football and Big Ten football content. There will be videos about Washington and Michigan released tomorrow, giving some reasons why I think each team can win the national championship. And then starting next week, which really starts tomorrow, but it's really after Monday's national title game, on about Wednesday, there will be the first of many 2024 preseason content videos that will go right up until the 2024 season kicks off. On August 24th, week zero, or August 31st, week one for the 2024 season. Subscribe to my Patreon page if you want to support the channel and also gain insider access to bonus content. There will be videos. I will be vlogging my journey to the national championship game and the football and non football related stuff for that trip. So if you want to see everything, Check out my Patreon page and sign up as an All-American or Heisman member. If you're just content seeing bits and pieces of it and some of the highlight stuff, then that'll be posted on YouTube, as that's where most of my content is. Lastly, check out Penn State's 2024 schedule, which I will link down below in the description and also below my pinned comment. Read over that schedule and tell me in the comments what you think Penn State's record will be next year. More importantly, though, I want to know what you think the record should be. What should the expectation be 
for Penn State's 2024 season. And that's where we'll start off here, is talking about the schedule, talking about the depth chart, talking about who returns, mixing in a little bit of the good and bad from 2023. And also, because we have to, factoring in Penn State and how they've been doing in developing players and recruiting players. So Penn State, going back to, I'd say, the 2020-2021 class would be appropriate because these are players who are still on the team, older if you go all the way back to the 2020 class, but they're still on the team, and you have players who could be even from the 2019 class and with a red shirt and COVID eligibility, they could play in 2024. They could be on the team, like Tyler Elston, for example, part of the 2020 class, and he is going to be on the team next season. Penn State overall had the 17th best recruiting class in 2020. In 2021, the Nittany Lions had the 21st ranked recruiting class. All of this is per 24-7 Sports. You can look it up at 247sports.com and checking out their links to get to football recruiting. Their 2022 recruiting class was 6th nationally. Their 2023 class was 14th. And the 2024 class, who will be freshmen, true freshmen for the 2024 season, that currently is the 14th best recruiting class in the country. These are not factoring in transfers. Transfers really started to become factored into recruiting rankings in about the 2022 recruiting classes with significant weight attached to those transfers so they would be assessed accurately along with high schoolers. So one top 10 class, that was the class that included Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen, Danny Dennis Sutton, Drew Aller. That is really the core class heading into 2024, where those players are now either juniors or redshirt sophomores. They're going to be the main meat, I think, especially given the five-star talent and the plethora of four-star talent on that 2022 recruiting class. Again, with Drew Aller being the top signee and being the main story of that recruiting class, he will be a junior in 2024. So Penn State on average has had a top 15 recruiting class really closer to 10 than 15th. They've been recruiting better than Michigan. And if you don't factor in Oregon, Washington, USC, and UCLA, they've been the second best recruiting program in the Big Ten for the past half a decade, I would argue. They've out-recruited Michigan now for three years in a row if you factor in the 2024 recruiting class. I know that High school ratings are not always accurate, but 24-7 sports is pretty darn accurate. And the reason Michigan has been above Penn State, I think, has less to do with recruiting and a whole of a lot more to do with being the best developmental program in the country and having a much better head coach and coordinator group than what Penn State has had in that same time frame under James Franklin. But the Nittany Lions have talent. And if that talent can be utilized and better developed than in prior years, Penn State can be where Michigan is at right now, where you're not a top 10 talent roster, but you have elite coaching, you have elite development, you're strong, you're physical, you have budding athleticism, all things that make a elite football program and elite football teams. Now, The Nittany Lions this season, they were expected to deliver on the the big stage. They were. Many people picked them to win the Big Ten or split with Michigan and Ohio State. Some picked them to reach the college football playoff. That never happened. The minute that Ohio State game occurred, it was evident that it would take a miracle for Penn State to win the Big Ten or reach the college football playoff because Ohio State controlled that game. It was a close game, but one that was controlled by Ohio State. And it was the exact same performance against Michigan. There was more offensive fireworks between the two teams, but Michigan controlled that matchup. And Drew Aller had a 136.9 passer rating this season. His quarterback efficiency rating per ESPN was 26th, just outside of the top 25. 
He had 25 passing touchdowns, only two interceptions. His touchdown-interception ratio was impressive, but that was more so because he only completed 59.9% of his passes, constantly overthrew receivers or threw too much to the outside of his receivers. His receivers, whether it was Keandre Lambert-Smith, Dante Cephas, Harrison Walls III, Liam Clifford, Amari Evans, his wide receivers did not have good hands. Lambert Smith led the team with 673 receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns, but Tyler Warren and Theo Johnson had 14 out of Penn State's 30 receiving touchdowns, and Nicholas Singleton led the team in receiving yards if you don't factor in Warren, Johnson, and Lambert Smith. He had more receiving yards than Dante Cephas and Harrison Wallace III, which if you told me that in the preseason, I would have had a hard time believing that, but... Alas, here we are. Drew Aller only had 2,631 passing yards on 389 attempts, only averaged 6.8 yards per pass attempt. And look, I know Big Ten defenses are different. They're elite. You, you saw this in the Ole Miss game, where Penn State's offense put up over 500 yards, and if not for their defense missing... If you factor in the Abdul Carter injury, really four of some of their best players, Penn State probably wins that game. They had 510 total yards, two turnovers, 21 first downs. Penn State hadn't had over 500 yards on anyone who was noteworthy in the regular season, whether that was Iowa at home in that blowout or Ohio State and Michigan, the two top 10 teams who they lost to, and the top two teams in the Big Ten overall. I would say they didn't even have 500 yards against Rutgers, against Indiana. I don't even think they had 500 total yards against UMass. So it's not all his fault. Part of it is on James Franklin. Part of it is on him. Part of it is also on the fact that it's very hard to have elite or great offensive output in the Big Ten. It just is the Big Ten's the best defensive conference in the country. It's been that way for quite some time, with some exceptions when you get Alabama or Georgia, typically with Kirby Smart manning the defense as the D.C. or head coach there at different times. But the offense was lethargic. Penn State averaged 4.7 yards per carry. A lot of that was inflated against weaker opponents, or they ran decently at times against Ohio State or Michigan, but not for touchdowns and not consistently. And only averaging 6.8 yards per throw is not a way to win games. Penn State was phenomenal on defense, phenomenal on special teams, but they need to do more in 2024. They have to if they want to get things rolling. I mean, this is a massive season. This isn't a year where 10-3 and or 11-2 and is going to cut it with the talent that Penn State has. It just isn't. Penn State has, next season, I think they're easily a top 10 team. My preseason top 25 will drop in a few days after the national championship game. Penn State will definitely be a top 10 team. But even top 10 probably won't cut it. Because Penn State's schedule, let's check it out. You can find this via the link in the description or below the pinned comment. Penn State's 2024 schedule Starts off with a road game at West Virginia on August 31st. Now, if the defense isn't set and Aller isn't improved and the offensive line and running back room still struggles at times at running, that could be that could be a game. I mean, West Virginia went 9-4 and four this season. They had success running. I think Garrett Green is a good quarterback. He's returning next year. And maybe... Neil Brown has righted the ship there, but I would say that is still a game in which Penn State will be massively favored, and I I wouldn't be picking the upset there. It's way too early for that anyway, and I think Penn State will be decisively better than West Virginia. But they kick off the 2024 season in Morgantown on the 31st. They have their first home game of the season against Bowling Green September 7th. They have a bye week September 14th. They host Kent State, the Nittany Lions do, September 21st, then host Illinois September 28th, host UCLA October 5th. They have a road game at USC in Los Angeles October 12th before having their second bye week of the 2024 season 
in which they then play Wisconsin on the road October 26th, host Ohio State November 2nd, host Washington November 9th, play at Purdue, and a back-to-back road game at Minnesota on the 16th and 23rd of November, respectively. They finish off the season hosting the Maryland Terrapins. Now, that is an easy schedule, given how the Big Ten is 18 teams and Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, Washington, Oregon, those five teams are going to finish, in my opinion at least, kind of doing the power rankings game. Those are all top 10 teams this season, and they will all contend to be top 15, top 10 teams next season. USC, I'd expect them to make some improvements because I still think Lincoln Riley is a good, not great, but good coach, and they have a lot of talent. And Iowa, team that was fringe top 25 this season. Wisconsin, they'll make some improvements as their identity begins to set in. Nebraska will improve. The Big Ten is going to be, along with the SEC, by far the two toughest conferences in the country. And to only have USC and at Wisconsin, those are road games that I respect, but Those are programs that right now are much worse either on the field, off the field, recruiting, coaching, in in a multitude of those areas, Penn State checks the box and is superior to both the Trojans and the Badgers right now. Ohio State and Washington, back-to-back home games, November 2nd and 9th, that's a tough stretch, factoring in USC by week and at Wisconsin, the three weeks before those games, that's a tough stretch. But Michigan, for example, they have to play Texas, Oregon, Washington, Ohio State, all those teams, same schedule. Oregon has to play Michigan and Ohio State and Washington. And they play rival Oregon State on the road, and they they have a tough schedule too. For Penn State to really only have one of the traditional Big Two in the Big Ten, Ohio State, and it's at home, and Ohio State, they're going to lose some serious production with Marvin Harrison Jr. leaving, Michael Hall leaving, Kyle McCord has left, Fleming transferring from Ohio State to Penn State, Washington will also be losing more production than the Nittany Lions. This is a schedule that is full to the brim of opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity here for Penn State to get 11 wins or go undefeated with a team that maybe with a typical Big Ten East schedule would finish 11 and 1 at best. And I'm not exaggerating there. You only there's there's no Michigan here. There's not even Michigan State. And as much as I think Washington and Oregon are going to walk into the Big 10, and not necessarily have immediate success, but they will be among the premier programs or in that tier two, they could struggle. And having Washington at home with that travel difference, and there's going to be a weather component in that game, because it will be in November. November is cold, colder in Pennsylvania than in Washington, plus jet lag, and Ohio State won't be as experienced. Penn State, there's a chance that Penn State will be stronger in the trenches than Ohio State this season and have more of that matchup that Michigan had with them in 21 and 22 and to a much lesser degree 23. There's just so much is coming together to where I think all the stars are aligning. The talent, the returning production. I mean, Drew Aller, quarterback, he's coming back. Singleton, Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen are coming back. Tyler Warren is coming back. Theo Johnson could come back at tight end. Keandre Lambert-Smith could. Omari Evans, Harrison Wallace, much of that wide receiver room, if not all of the wide receivers outside of Dante Cephas, are returning. The offensive line will be gutted from a starting perspective, but there can be improvements made there. Nolan Rootsy, he's committed in the transfer portal, along with Julian Fleming. And it sounds like A.J. Harris is being targeted by Penn State. They really need him at corner. And Chase Meyer, reliable kicker from Tulsa, who made 85% of his field goals this season, 
he's transferring in to replace the outgoing Alex Falcons, who is incredibly reliable at kicker. And that's just offensively and special teams, of course. Defensively, Zane Durant is coming back, Koziah Izzard, Danny Dennis Sutton, Amin Venover, Chop Robinson and Adisa Isaac are gone. Devon Ellis is Ellis is listed as a redshirt senior at left defensive tackle. I don't know if he has a COVID eligibility or that he could use or if he's gone, but Penn State's two deep at defensive line are a lot better than their two deep, I think, at linebacker and at the secondary. And at linebacker, Abdul Carter will be back. Kobe King will be back. Curtis Jacobs could be back. I don't think he opt out of, opted out of the Peach Bowl from what I remember. And, I mean, he's a junior. He's a star. He's projected as a first or second round pick. But he could return. And Tyler Elston, Dominic DeLuca, and Keon Wiley at linebacker will return. That's a, there's a very... There's a lot of depth at the linebacker position for Penn State. In the secondary is where there are concerns. I listed Dennis Sutton, Carter, King, and Ellis at in the front six, front seven, whatever scheme Tom Allen chooses to run. That'll depend on. The secondary is an area of concern because Johnny Dixon and Kalen King are gone. I think safety with Kevin Winston Jr., Jalen Reed, Zaki Wheatley, and Keaton Ellis, that's safe. But Daquan Hardy, Johnny Dixon, Kalen King departing, and Zion Tracy and Cam Miller just, they did not look good in the Peach Bowl. They did. They were constantly getting torched by Trey Harris and other Ole Miss receivers, including Caden Priestcorn. I know those are NFL players, but regardless, you're going to be facing NFL receivers from Ohio State, from Oregon, from Washington as I think Jalen McMillan's coming back and Jeremy Bernard is definitely going to be an NFL receiver. And Michigan, with Tyler Morris and Samaj Morgan and maybe Darius Clemens returns, Michigan, I think, is athleticism at receiver that they haven't had in the 2021 or really even 2022 season. They have athleticism at receiver now, so Penn State is going to have to beef up that secondary Fleming coming in helps Reynolds, the five-star tight end in the 2024 recruiting class. Luke Reynolds, who's listed as the 27th best overall player per 24-7 sports and given a 98 overall ranking. I expect him to play as a freshman, even if both Theo Johnson and Tyler Warren return at tight end. That, that will be a vicious, deep tight end room. But this is a big season because of I've, as I've been laying out to you, the Lions are recruiting well. I think they're developing well. When you look at Chop Robinson, when you look at Kalen King, Olu Fashanu, who is going to be Penn State's first first round offensive lineman under James Franklin, and he was the first first team All Big Ten offensive lineman. For Penn State under James Franklin, that shows that Franklin's teams are getting better and better at taking the offensive line and the defensive line seriously. Again, Adisa Isaac, Chop Robinson, Keelan King, Johnny Dixon, Curtis Jacobs. Penn State has done well even before this season at developing NFL talent, but doing it in the trenches, I think, is something new, particularly at offensive line. And their recruiting is improved. And Andy Kotelnicki, I think he is a top 10, uh, higher than that, actually, top five offensive coordinator. That was a an awesome hire, an elite hire. I think Tom Allen will be a top 15, top 10 defensive coordinator. He really ran the defense at Indiana and was involved there. That's why the defense was miles better than the offense practically every season, except for the 2019 season under Tom Allen. Franklin returns so much of the 2023 team from quarterback to both running backs to possibly both tight ends. Almost everyone at skill position who matters. He'll return all of his safeties, potentially all of his linebackers, enough depth of the defensive line to reload there. And Julian Fleming in the portal, that's a big get because Penn State's wide receiver room has been barren this season, and really even last season, despite Parker Washington being there with Keandre Lambert-Smith 
and Mitchell Tinsley, that was a disappointing season from a wide receiver production standpoint in 2022. Franklin needs to win something. He does. The schedule is, in my mind, it's not easy, but it's too easy by Penn State standards combining with this talent to go 10-2 and again. 11-1 and or 12-0, and I think, has to be the standard. And given the fact that Penn State, from a roster standpoint, from returning production, and even from staff changes, Penn State's already made their staff changes. Ohio State has yet to make their staff changes. There's more certainty with Penn State next year than Ohio State. Doesn't mean I don't think that Ryan Day's a better head coach than James Franklin. In my mind, he absolutely is. And I do think Jim Knowles and parts of the Ohio State staff are better than their counterparts on the Penn State staff. And Ohio State has more talent. But Franklin has beaten Ohio State before. It was off a blocked field goal, but a win is a win. This Ohio State team, depending on who returns, who doesn't, the transfer portal, coaches, could be Day's worst team. I think that a win over Ohio State shouldn't just be desired, it should be expected, and a win over everyone else on the schedule who will likely be inferior to Ohio State should also be expected. My actual prediction, it will come out within a week or two because I'm going to be doing way too early 2024 Big Ten schedule predictions that I'm working on right now, but the expectation should be Penn State easily makes the 12-team playoff and they either get the first round by or they get the home playoff game, which would that would be sweet to have a home playoff game in Beaver Stadium in the month of December. But that's all I wanted to say in this video. I think 2024 is a make or break, an all or nothing type of season for Penn State, at least when it comes to making the playoff and improving in wins and losses. Winning the Big Ten, I don't know if that's necessarily a non-negotiable from my point of view, but definitely getting 11 or 12 regular season wins and playing in Indy, or if you go 11 and 1 and tiebreakers don't favor you because two teams, two other teams are 11 and 1 or 12 and 0 and better, then oh well, at least you made the playoff with 11 and 1 record, you probably get a home playoff game, at least win that home playoff game. Thank you all so much for watching. I want to give a shout out to Crash2488 for being a Heisman patron and sponsoring this video. I want to give a shout out to Spencer Bringhurst, an All-American patron, sponsoring this video. If you're an All-American or Heisman, you get the insider access to bonus content. If you're a Heisman and you're a Heisman for six months, you get signed college football with Sam merchandise. And for my all-conference patrons, thank you for sponsoring this video. No matter what your tier, you will always be thanked at the end of the video. Your support is always appreciated. However, it is never expected. Thanks to Will Loftus, Gabriel Callender, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Chris Lane, Austin Christmas, and Zubin Za for being all conference patrons. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.